It was the year childhood shut down. The taxidermist storefront with its stuffed, gutless creatures. The lawnmower from Shandawa dragged out of the morning, pulled in at night. The fortune teller's glowing hands sputtering out, and even the tattooist packing up her flash arm beneath the rebel flag. So many landmarks ousted, bulldozed, refabulated, when you became an addict in the most final sense. In other words, die. The prophet of the drive had already foretold this, for he too smoked everything he could find. Hydrangeas, watermelons, lost mittens, last night's fall of rain. Phones and his face lit up, hair dark beneath his kerchief. For he is a boy, this prophet, squatting in his father's garage by day, and at night moping his Pilgrimage. It's all a matter of the slab, he tells me, that he is alive, but a miracle of oversight, a miscalculation. So death is always a side or behind him, a mistake. For 15 years, a poison hasn't killed him. Well, you, after nine separable weeks, are dead. Who wants to hear about the fragility of the heart, what it can endure again? I will hurt, my masks will be rejected, what seemed perfect, even if it does not die, will anyway die. Nine weeks, yes, only this, and years, then months between those slices of time destruction. Each instance you were alone, unable to be lonely, and the black habit pounced, hissing, I am the worst thing you can do to yourself. The ideal revenge. Which, in the December cold, the still dark cruelty of April seemed a reasonable kind of act, almost kind, nearly gentle, a ritual, cooking up the white rock chalk with soda, feeding it into the glass pipe tamped with Brillo, and then bang! Happiness with the first bird draw, you, Ubermensch in the land of extreme dopamine, hunger unbearable in you from then on, that attendant death. The prophet has stopped me again, somewhere between La Grata and women's wear. Those changeable commercial blocks with a park in the middle, dim, dripping with late November. His news like the tall, dark stranger and a promise of exotic travel. Only his fortune is of fires, his anxious vagabond eyes flitting left, right like a damaged robin's, how they consume everything, leaving only his mattress black and unusable, or of hit and runs of the gasp as the needle slams the vein, then the need, and then nothingness. Once, when he was a child, much less given to realism, he told me he could turn into a stone lion that would stand guard over the strip of dimes. This is about the mind and how frail it is. About how you entered that frailty and in a brief and fragile time span, you die. I tell the prophet I love him. I can't help finding him beautiful even though he is not the dark angel of the streets. I will not romanticize pain. He is what they call mad, a loser, an addict 
And now aging, skin seizing against his cheekbones, teeth groove, yellow as chow mein. He does not even have a rebellious allure. Though his claw striding hard from the hips, but with a lunge in it, remains a wilderness of knowledge. And when he crosses over to me, hey man, he calls, looking good today. I always have a coin. We embrace, he bows, peace. And then I plead silently, please don't die. First, there was a house you went to, an innocent suburban home off 100th Street. Here is where you bought it, where you saw a 12-year-old girl purchase an eight ball as if buying a bag of marshmallows, where you saw a woman with no fingers and each stub an unpaid debt to the dealer, a man getting fucked by a smack daddy and later crawling around on the floor to retrieve the rock thrown at him like a terrible bone. You shuddered, bought another one. Even after the man, your connection fell down in the snow and died. It had been Halloween after all. Both of us thought the other was not who we were. And yet beneath all that error, we scented kin, 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 like an awful drum between us. Now it is summer and we are wandering down the drive by High Life Records, Stella's. You had just snapped a picture of me pretending to play a double bass. Yes, this is what I want to see, you said. You in a dress, long white hair. How much I look forward to loving you old, to seeing you then. Me never quite believing you, wanting to. And suddenly we were eye level with him. I introduced you, two dark and bony men wearing kerchiefs. The resemblance was strong. Both of you loping, two beautiful ruined men. You gave him a coin, you smiled at each other. You couldn't judge him anymore. There was only understanding, though that soon too would die. And then you were alone. After years of being clean as I managed the funds kept watch, you convinced yourself there was no longer a threat. I left briefly and you slipped, forged a check, dialed the number you had never forgotten, and bam, like a bad Superman, he was at our door, come to damn the day to cut the deal for your descent. Her heart has never been this ancient bucket in her chest, and all the blood well dry, or nearly. A mud slim trickle still, an old source some days, but hardly sufficient to sustain her. Even the prophet takes pity, and when she says, sorry, I have no coin right now, continues to walk with her down the revolving vista of the street where every 20 minutes a blends becomes a Starbucks. Mark's pet stop sells out to a Belgian fries. The playground falls to a construction site, and then a series of high rises busting from the soil on monstrous chicken's feet. She can't stop this. Couldn't stop that. I know, he says, sideways at her as they stride together. They were called by the devourment. It's all ancestral in the end. And she understands now what he's speaking of, and that it includes him and herself too, and that they will not escape, never would have, this ghost yodel, yes, of dying. I write now to say you are not for nothing. That you are a hard marking in my mind. That my body turns towards yours a hundred times a day and is disoriented, finding absence. A whole new neighborhood of no sweet silk flesh, no grin of gangly innocence, no crazy riffings, stupid dances, anxious sulks, but only this pale contortion of memories that alternately sink and buoy and will never be renewed, accumulated again. Too far from us, 
You bought your last hit, and the clock wrote up your ventricles, and I don't know how long the pain lasted, and if you had the chance to think of much, only that you were long cold when they loaded you into the hearse, your phone's still ringing, it's breaking the law, ringtone every 15 minutes, as I tried desperately to find you and couldn't, because a fire had raised our home, a madman had slaughtered our animals, a hurricane had rolled up all our instruments, our bands, those careful notes you penned on the five short lines of the stave, there was nothing left to recognize you within. You were wandering in your mind like a prophet down these ten shifting blocks of darkness, palm smoke and unclaimable. Nothing could tamp the wound that was the damaged land of childhood, what it should have been, what it was, and everything else from then on widening the strangeness. Too late to know this now. Prophet is only the aftermath. A new world chorus on a grubby proscenium ranting about loss. But I miss you. And there is still the sky with its exhilarating inconsistency and permanence. I'm not dying. I cannot die. Not possible. I will not witness it. Death. <laughs>